we're going to cover four definitions in this video, but I think it makes sense to do it in one shot instead of four. So we're going to talk about panel boards, switch boards, and switch gear, and that is the subject of Article 408, and also motor control center, which is regulated in Article 430. Now, all of these are defined in Article 100, and they're all fairly similar. So let's start out with panel board. Uh, a panel board is simply a panel containing buses and overcurrent devices that's placed in a cabinet or cutout box. All right, so here in the photograph, we have three panel boards installed in three cabinets. There you go. If you're an electrician, you know what a panel board is, right? We've all installed a million panel boards. We've all got one at our house, at our place of business. Those are panel boards. Uh, here's an example of a, a somewhat unusual panel board. Some of you guys have may, may have never seen these. This is called a column width panel board, and they're discussed in uh, 300.3, I think it's C as in Charlie. Uh, column width panel board, if you, can, if you can see down below it, that is an I-beam, right, being used as a column. And they place that inside of the column, and as you can imagine, it, it provides the, the most physical protection that you could possibly provide anything. I mean, if you want to damage that panel board, you're going to have to knock the building down. So that is an example of a column width panel board. So panel board, single panel, installed in a cabinet or cutout box. A switchboard is bigger, generally speaking. So it's a large single panel frame or assembly on which are mounted switches, overcurrent and other protective devices, buses, and usually instruments. So what we're looking at here in this photograph is a switchboard. So there's our switchboard. Here's another example of a switchboard. Uh, the label that you're looking at in the top left is just a close-up of the labels that are installed down here. And if you squint your eyes, you might be able to read that it says dead front switchboard section one of three. So here is a switchboard section, another switchboard section, and another switchboard section. Those three create a switchboard. So we have a panel board, we have a switchboard, and then we also have what we call switch gear. And switch gear is a little bit trickier. Switch gear is an enclosed assembly containing primary power circuit, circuit switching, interrupting devices, or both with buses and connections. It may include auxiliary devices. All right, so switch gear is a much more complex version of a switch board, basically. Um, one of the characteristics of switch gear is that you usually have individual buckets for your different things or, or you know, complete different sections for all of your circuit breakers or, or your devices, whatever it is that you have. And it has more than just overcurrent devices. It has meters and it has relays like we're looking at here in the picture. That would be switch gear. Now, I know growing up in the industry, uh, I always called anything that could accept a wire bigger than my finger, I called it switch gear, right? You know, so <laughs> outside of my house is where my switch gear is. No, your house does not have switch gear. Your house has a panel board. Um, if you live in an apartment, you might have a switch board. Switch gear is usually limited to industrial facilities. Uh, you can certainly find switch gear in, in large commercial, but it's usually for industrial types of facilities. So that would be your switch gear. Now, panel boards, switch boards, and switch gear are all regulated in Article 408. The requirements for switch gear and switch boards are pretty much the same. The requirements for panel boards are a little bit different. So switch boards are covered in part one of Article 408. Panel boards are covered in part two, or it might be part two and part three. I'm just going off the top of my head. Probably the biggest difference is that panel boards have to have overcurrent protection, uh, and that's in 408.36. Switch boards and switch gear don't necessarily have to have overcurrent protection in Article 408. But it'd be pretty unusual to see an installation where it doesn't have overcurrent protection. So panel board, switch board, switch gear. And then you also have motor control centers. A motor control center is an assembly of at least one enclosed section with a common power bus and motor control units as the main feature. And that's where it can get really convoluted. What's the difference between a motor control center and switch gear? Well, 
usually just how it's listed. Um, if you were to if you were to walk up to a piece of equipment that looks like this, and you ask me point blank, is that a motor control center or is that switch gear? I would say that's a motor control center, but it could easily be switch gear as well. Um, looking at this photograph, is this a motor control center or is this switch gear? Probably switch gear. You've got motor control units, but you've got dials and other things which probably leads me to believe that it's switch gear. But this could be a motor control center as well. So really, it, it's a matter of how it's listed. And what are the requirements for motor control centers versus switch gear? If you call it one and it's actually the other, uh, is it going to create a problem? Not really. I mean, the requirements are, are more or less the same. Motor control centers in Article 430 actually do have to have overcurrent protection. But again, I think you're going to be hard pressed to find an installation where you wouldn't have overcurrent protection for switch gear. So call it switch gear call it a motor control center. Either way, it, it's probably not going to make a difference. Be sure to like, follow, subscribe, and ring the bell.